for today's lesson, you'll learn how to build a custom mobile IoT project by integrating Android Studio, Firebase Real-Time Database, and ESP32S Node MCU. You'll learn how to write Android applications using Kotlin programming language to store and read data to and from a Firebase Real-Time Database, and be able to send and read data to and from an ESP32 board. You'll learn how to write codes that listen to any changes in data in a Firebase database so that your Android app and your ESP32 board get updated data instantly with minimal latency. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to create an app that reads sensor data from your ESP32 and control any output devices attached to your ESP32 from your Android phone in real time. Hi, my name is Joe Edgo, and welcome to Lesson 6 of the IoT Development Training Course with ESP32. Please note that this is a continuation of your previous Lesson 5 integrating Firebase and ESP32, so please make sure to check it first because I'll be using the exact same program and circuit connection for this demonstration. To begin, let's open our code from Lesson 5. Recall that we read and store LDR data in the Firebase real-time database and control two LEDs as well, one digital and one analog through pulse width modulation. Now, inside this loop function, we perform everything at a specified interval every 5,000 milliseconds using the millis function. Well, the main problem with this is that our code has to wait for 5 seconds before it reads any possible data changes in our database. As you can see, if I change this LED digital value to true, there is at most 5 second delay before the change is reflected in our ESP32 board. Same goes for the LED analog value. Well, we can reduce the interval to like 1 millisecond, but that's not very efficient because we will just be consuming resources and bandwidth in exchange for minimal latency. Because we will be reading data continuously, even though there are no changes to our database. So to resolve this, we will implement Firebase Stream, wherein our ESP32 reads data from this real-time database only when the data changes in a specific node path. I'll add two more Firebase database objects, FBDO S1 and FBDO S2 for Stream 1 and Stream 2. Each will have its own database path, one for the LED analog and the other for LED digital. Please note that there is another way to do this, having one database object that can point to multiple paths. However, for now, I'll show you the simplest. The next thing is, in the setup function, after we configured everything, we can call the begin stream function of the Firebase real-time database. This accepts two arguments, a reference to the database object and the database path. Now. This function call returns a boolean value depending on whether it is successful or not. So, let's put a condition here that if it returns false, I'll print an error message so that we know what causes it. So, I'll duplicate this code and do the same for database object stream 2. Now, inside the loop function, we no longer want to read the LED analog and the LED digital values based on the specified interval, so I'll cut this code block and move it outside this if block. And now, we'll be reading data from a real-time database on data change. To do this, I'll copy this same condition that checks if the Firebase is ready and we have successfully signed up, and then, and close this entire code block inside this if statement. Now, we need to call the readStream function and pass in the reference of the stream1 database object. I'll also convert this into an if statement that if it can't read the stream, then print an error message. Then, to actually get the data, we don't use the getInt, but instead, we'll use the streamAvailable function. I'll change this to stream1 and the rest of the database objects here. 
However, I'll do nothing if the stream is unavailable. Now, I'll copy this code and then do the same for stream2 database object. And that's it. Let's try to upload our code. So now, when I change this node value to true, notice an instant update on our serial monitor and the red LED in our circuit. Same goes once I change this analog value to 255. Only the change in that node is retrieved instantly. And now, to complete this IoT project, let's create an Android application where we can read and display the sensor value as well as control these LEDs in real time. So, open your Android Studio and create a new project. Select Empty Activity Template and click Next. I'll name a project IoT Dev Lesson 6. By default, we only have one text view in the middle of our layout. So, I have prepared a very simple layout prior to this. And to make this demonstration short, I'll paste my previously created XML layout code here. Please note that you don't have to copy the exact layout that I have here. Feel free to have your own layout. If you want to learn more about creating Android applications, please check my other video training course, Android App Development Using Kotlin. The link is provided in the description below. Now, in my layout, I have a button LED set value, an edit text for signing the LED PWM value. I also have another button to read the sensor data and a text view to display the sensor reading in volts. Let's see how it looks in the emulator. So what we want here is that this button set PWM value, once clicked, should get the value we place in this edit text PWM and then store it to the Firebase real-time database LED analog path. Also, the read sensor data button, once clicked, should read the value from the Firebase real-time database sensor voltage path and display the corresponding voltage to these text view volts. So, let's begin. First, let's enable view binding in our project. And now, let's start a very simple reading of sensor data stored in our database. For this, I'll call setOnClickListener for this button read. And then, I'll call this function readData, which I'm about to create. Now, let's implement a code that reads data from a Firebase real-time database. And to do that, the simplest way is to click on Tools, Firebase, and the Firebase Assistant window will appear. Locate the Real-Time Database section and click the Get Started with Real-Time Database Kotlin. Click the first step, which is to connect your app to Firebase. Your browser should launch and redirects you to the Firebase console. Make sure that you are currently logged in with your account. Select your target database. And after a few seconds, your Android Studio project is ready to connect. After clicking the connect button, we can now use Firebase in our Android project and start using the Firebase SDK. Going back to the Firebase Assistant window, click the step 2 to add the real-time database SDK to your app. Now, it says here that it will add rules to include the Google Services Gradle plugin, apply the plugin, and implementation. Please note that you must have the updated version of your Android Studio for this to work. Also, for this current version, make sure that you are using this version of 20.1.0 in your build.gradle file. Otherwise, some of the methods that I will be using in this demo might not be available in the lower versions. And wait for a couple of seconds while your project is being configured. And once done, you should see these two green checks for step 1 and step 2. I'll skip step 3 for now and jump right away 
to reading or writing data to our Firebase real-time database. So to read data from a Firebase real-time database, first, we need to declare a variable database of type database reference. I'll press Alt-Enter to import the required package for this. And then inside our read data function, we need to call the get reference method of our Firebase database instance to access a specific location in our database to read and write data. In our Firebase database, what we want is to access this sensor node and its child voltage. So in this get reference, I'll pass in the node path sensor and access its child voltage and then call the get method. Now, I'll put this add on success listener so that I can write code that gets executed when the task of getting the reference is completed. So when we do this, we can work with the data from our Firebase database through this data snapshot. To be sure, I'll ask first if the data snapshot exists, and then I'll create a local variable voltage of type float and assigns a value from this data snapshot. I'll display a toast message saying successful voltage read. And finally, I'll display this voltage value to our text view volts. However, if the data snapshot doesn't exist, I'll also display a toast message. Also, we can add the on failure listener to display another toast message that it failed to get the database reference at the specified location. So I'll double check my code. Okay, I forgot to pass in the root view of this view binding variable. So now let's check it in our emulator. In here, we can see the value from our sensor voltage path. Now, when I click this read button sensor, it should access this specific location and read whatever value stored in that location. And it works. So now let's try writing or store values to a specific location in our database. When we click this set PWM value button, we store whatever we type in this edit text view to our database at location led slash analog. So I'll set up this button set lead value that once click, I'll call this set data function. First, I'll create a variable PWM value of type int. And then try to get whatever value specified by the user, hoping that it is a valid integer. But if not, I'll display a toast message containing the specific error message and then exit this function. However, if it succeeds, then I'll get the reference of the lead node path and its child path analog, and then set the integer value that we type in the edit text PWM. Similarly, once it succeeded, I'll simply display a toast message, PWM value set successful, but if it failed, I'll display another message saying failed to set a new PWM value. Now let's test it again. First, let's test if the previous functionality still works. And it's good. Now, I'll enter a PWM value of 255. And once I click this button, you see an instant change in our Firebase real-time database as well as the blue LED in our ESP32 circuit. Let's test it again. And it works great. And now, one thing that we need to improve here is the real-time reading of the sensor data. We don't want to be clicking this button every time to check if the value stored in our database has changed. And for this, we'll implement the onDataChange method in Firebase to listen for the changes to the contents in a given database path and read its content. 
In the onCreate function, I'll call this custom function database listener, and I'll press Alt-Enter to create this function. And then I'll get the reference of this entire database, which means we're going to listen to changes in any of these node paths. Please note that if you have a huge tree structure of your database, then only get the reference of the specific node path that you want to monitor for data changes. Otherwise, there's going to be a performance hit in your system. So I'll create a local variable called post listener and assign an object that implements value event listener interface. This interface requires to implement two members, the on data change and the on canceled methods. Inside this on data change method, I'll create a local variable voltage. and get the value from the sensor voltage database path. And then I'll display this voltage value to the text view volts. If there's an error, I'll simply display a toast message, fail to read sensor data. And finally, we add the listener using the add value listener method. Now, each time the data changes, your listener will be called with an immutable snapshot of the data. So let's try our app one last time. Now, you'll notice that the voltage reading is being displayed in real time. As the data in the sensor voltage path is changed, so is the display in our app. I'll check the rest of the functionality. And still works perfectly. Now, you might notice that we have not yet implemented a switch or a button in our app that will toggle this LED digital Boolean value. And I will leave this task as your challenge activity. So to practice your skills in Android development with Firebase and ESP32, try to improve this program by adding a switch widget in your app. Here, you will practice how to read and write to a specific database node path. For that, once your app is launched, your program must check the current Boolean value from the LED digital path to toggle the switch accordingly. And then you can toggle the switch to update the Boolean value in the LED digital path. Again, thank you very much for watching. And if you've learned something of value here, please support this channel by clicking the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications for every new video I uploaded for this course. See you again in the next lesson.